seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, welcome to the vineyard. Come and find yourself a seat. If you have a coffee cup in your hand, you're one stage in this morning. If you haven't yet, grab a coffee and grab a seat. There's some seats at the back, there's some seats at the front, there's some seats in the middle. If you are new to the vineyard, there are some blue things on your chairs just to orient you as to where we are in the building. There's a map there. There's a list of what we do during the morning. There's a list of what the kids are doing and the youth. And on the back stuff about what we do here generally with regard to what our um, working out to the way we do things, our style. Right. Uh, notices. Let's do notices first, shall we? What am I on? Slide two. Do you have slide two? If you're new to the vineyard, uh, we have some things for you to take away with today. We have some welcome packs there on the, uh, the back. We have some travel mugs that's on the table and some kids bottles that's also on the table. We also have one of these you can use during the service, as I just said, to orientate you as to how we do things here. Click. If you want to come along regularly, this is how to do that, to be a member of the gang. Membership is a verb here, so you get to do membership rather than sign on a dotted line. Come along Sundays, join a small group. I'll go through a few of those in a sec. Give regularly, there'll be a basket coming round uh, to serve on a rota and invite your friends. Click. Kids Quest, uh, the two weeks ago, is still going. This is one is still going. Uh, last week, traffic cops. What do traffic cops have in their itinerary, their store for uh, when they go out on, uh, on, the, on the job? What was the answer was a teddy bear. Traffic cops ca carry a teddy bear because children, well done. Because the children ch uh, carry teddy bears to give to children if there's an accident and they can actually calm them down with it. This week's question is about unicorns. Find out that at the back. Click. We have baptisms next week, so we're not here next Sunday morning. This place will be closed. Uh, we do need someone here to help out with Grow Baby. If you're free next Sunday and you can't go to the baptisms, if you can come and just uh, receive any donations we're going to have be, be given here, that'd be great. Paint parties coming up in August. August is very different to what we generally do here on Sundays, but you'll see the details as we come up to that, as we approach August. Click. I say we do need some more ideas needed. We need another designated driver for the rotor. We're short of a driver and we need a baby for next week. Club is tonight at our place. Click. Uh, ignore that one. Lundy. No, go back one. Lego Sunday is in three weeks' time. So baptism is next week. Two weeks' time we're here for church. And in three weeks' time, Lego Sunday is here. Which we did, uh, that's the thing we did at Fitz the last Sunday we were at Fitz Wine Mark before we moved over. Uh, right, Jamie. Jamie's got a notice to give. And then we'll. Can we have the band back as well, if that's okay? Hi, all. Um, one quick final thing to say this Thursday is the first of our mentoring training programs. So those of you who is here, yeah. So those of you who may be interested in linking with Bar and Bus and getting involved in mentoring young people in our local secondary schools. We're meeting here on Thursday at half past seven. So um, see me afterwards or just turn up is fine. Um, it's always nice to know who's coming beforehand, but you know, still, you can see me afterwards, but if you forget, you can still come and see me afterwards. I hope you can make it here because you're here now. So, um, so yeah, no excuses. I'll see you later on. Um, well, we might steal some coffee from church, but that's about it. So, yeah. Brilliant, thanks. Why don't you stand up, folks, and we will um, just focus our minds on who we're here to focus our minds on. Lord Jesus, thank you for your revelation this morning, Lord. We pray that we will see you in our mind's eye, Lord, that we will sense you in the worship, Lord, that we will see you in the talk and in the prayer times, Lord, that we will see what you're doing around the world 
and just where we need to know more, Lord, about you and about how your kingdom works and how to support and look after each other in the kingdom, Jesus. And we ask for that now, Lord, this morning as we praise and worship you now. There's going to be three or four songs come up. The words will be come up on the board. Uh, sing along with those ones that you know of. Uh, kids go out after two songs. Youth go out after the end of the, um, uh, the worship. Okay, thanks.
God's love so confounded appears to us in a cleansing flow of blood. The sun left throne in glory for the Father's wrath and fury. For the sins of all he blessed Stand in awe and worship Raise your voice and worship Come adore The King of kings and lords Oh Lord, stand in awe Stand in awe and worship. Raise your voice and worship. Come adore the King of kings and Lord of lords. Behold the Lamb in heaven. He was dead, but God raised him from the grave. For his arm is mighty to save. Now glorified and reigning with the keys to death, and in his hand. Oh, hail the Lord of every man. Stand in awe and worship. Raise your voice and worship. Come adore. King of King and Lord of Lord, for standing over and worship, come raise your voice and worship, come adore the King of Kings and Lord. Oh Lord, stand in awe, yeah. Oh, stand in awe and worship. Come raise your voice and worship. Come adore the King of kings and Lord of lords. Stand in awe and worship. Raise your voice and worship. Come adore the King of kings and Lord of lords. The 
King of kings and lords. If you and you my Jesus. Kids are going out now. You are a primary school age or younger. Time to go out with your groups now. Hey, Dave. Got me carried. Dropped you mid flow there. <laughs> if you don't have a seat at the back, now's the time one of the kids go out. Seat won't stop. It's not like a musical chair. Just uh, use your elbows to get a seat. So he got carried away and forgot to announce that the kid came out. Less important if you're not a parent. And you, my Jesus, my strength and fortress, my hope and purpose, you.
thought it was the end, but it's just begun. And I'm a sinner saved by grace of God, not for what I've done.
your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more than Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Goodness, Lord. We do. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is our heart long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Your name is not on my Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Uh, youth are going out. If you are at primary school, but you're still at school, time to go out. Excellent. Uh, we have a video coming out for you. She's a sinner, an adulteress. She's got to be punished according to the law. Take her to the master. <laughs> master. Yes, master. Shame on you. Shame. 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 Stone her. Stone her. Master, what should we do? This woman has been caught in the act of adultery. She should be punished according to the law. What do you say? Answer, Master. We want to know your opinion. Yes, tell us. Is it right to kill her? He among you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Come on. 
Where are your accusers? Is there anyone here who's condemned you? Uh, no. No one. Then neither do I condemn you. Uh, Go. And sin no more. Thanks, John. Cool. Uh, now, the woman isn't named in the passage in the Bible. It's chapter 8. Does anyone, does anyone know who they think the woman was? Is anyone aware? Is anyone a scholar? They think it's Mary Magdalene. Yeah. And the kids have learned about Mary Magdalene in the group today. So if you've got kids uh, in primary school, that's what they're doing. Good luck explaining why people keep in the Bible. So have fun with that. Um, so... Um, we occasionally have guest speakers. Uh, I've got a guest speaker for you today who I'm really thrilled to have with us. Uh, we have been um, uh, thrilled with the things that Open Doors do around. If you don't know about Open Doors, Adrian's going to explain that. Um, very, very interesting subject. You might know nothing about it. It's quite uh, stark, some of the facts that come out from the facts that they've gleaned and the people they support around the world. But I'm just going to introduce you to uh, come and join us. Thank you very much. Adrian's from Shrey, if you're uh, familiar with Friars Church, he comes from uh, Friars Church down in, uh, I think, uh, where's Rob? I've been to Friars well, a long time ago, probably before Adrian got there, so yeah, yeah, excellent. Uh, if you want to slide, you just say click and then we're on to the next one, okay, cool. Thank you. Great morning everybody, can you meet? Good, that's always a helpful thing. <laughs> so, right. so, slides are up. Yeah, next one, please. Has anyone ever read this book? There we go. So, a few of you uh, have heard of uh, Man God Smuggler. Uh, he died uh, last November, age 94, and he was shortly before he died. What would you have done differently? He said, I would have been more radical. <laughs> Which is always an interesting. Uh, if you don't know about Brother Andrew, he, uh, God called him uh, when he last go Bible college to minister to Eastern Europe. And uh, he gave him a verse of Revelation. Uh, chapter 3, verse 2, which is strengthen that which remains. So he went across to Warsaw and uh, to a communist conference, and he said, I will be a Christian. And they said, okay. <laughs> he managed to sneak off, and he met a ch secret church there, and they said to him two key things which have uh, really been the basis of open doors ever since which is you being here is worth 10 of your ser sermons just want to know that we are remembered that we are part of something bigger that we are not alone and secondly they say, bring us bars we're desperate for bars we, though they show them in the lips we're not to buy them we need Bibles. And that started him muggling Bibles behind the curtain. He had his trusty little VW Beetle that he bought him. He just filled it with Bibles and he traveled around Eastern Europe. And he was stopped at all sorts of checkpoints. And they, he used to pray, Lord, make blind eyes see and make seeing eyes blind, which is a really good pro, pro and so uh so basically that's how it all started and that's very much what we do today we try and remember the church around the world 
and wheel and buzz. The Bible is a dangerous book. We have it on our shelves very often, but it informs lives. It makes a real difference. Next slide, please. Uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough to, to meet Tiram, who is the lady who spoke about this, and uh, saying here that uh, a bit like 1 Corinthians 12, which is about the different parts of the body, uh, that uh, when we come alongside persecuted Christians, it's like uh, taking care of the wound. It says, when one rejoices, all rejoice. One suffers, all suffer. And if there's one thing I want you to take home from this morning, it's that we are family. Dave went to Peru and he met Christians in Peru. And they are part of God's family as much as we're part of God's family. When you get to heaven, there won't be a really corner. There won't even be a vineyard corner or a Baptist corner. We'll all be together in Christ. So they are our family. Talking, of. It's not people over there. It's brothers and sisters in the Lord. Next, please. So this is uh, the results of the watch list. The world watch list is something that Open Doors has produced for the last 30 years. And basically, it looks at levels of persecution around the world. And it's based on five different things, from your private freedoms, family freedom, community, national, and church freedom. And when we think about freedom we off and persecution, we often think about martyrdom, people being killed. But that is the ultimate form of persecution. Persecution comes in many forms. It comes in not being able to get a job because you're a Christian. It comes from not being able to send children to school because you are a Christian. Or if they do go to school, they get bullied and they get bad grades. It comes with honor in many parts of the world, particularly across the Middle East and the Far East. There is an honor culture, which basically means what is important to the family and to the club and to the community is far more important than your individual choice. So you may choose to follow Christ. By doing that, you bring dishonor to your family and to your clan. One in uh, Pakistan killed his daughter for becoming a Christian. He was never punished for it. And when they asked him why he had killed his daughter, he said, she was no longer my daughter. That was his view. She brought dishonor to the family, therefore she must be got rid of. And people, that is the ultimate form of it, but people are chained to radiators, they're forbidden from going out, they go through all sorts of things. So it's not necessarily a governmental thing, in some cases, it is a family thing. It's a community thing. When I went to Vietnam, I met some men who become Christians through radio. And their village didn't follow Christ. They, it was sneakily communist, but they followed traditional religion. And they saw that as an affront to the Amsters. So they were... Their homes were destroyed, they were beaten, and they were thrown out. And one, one of them had been a Christian for two days, and when asked him why he'd stuck with it, he said, when it comes out of a tap, 
it never goes backwards. Which, which I found was interesting. When you've experienced the Lord, you know that. Uh, so persecution can be both what we call a smack, but it can be a squeeze as well to try and stop you. Uh, next slide, please. So the worst country in the world for persecution is North Korea. Uh, you probably know it's uh, governed by somebody called Kim Jong-un. Uh, and it's been governed by the same family since the end of World War II. It's communist, but it's a family cult. So you, the statues of the leaders all over the country, you have got to have pictures of them in your room. You've got to bow down to them. You've got to... Uh, the state has meetings groups just to check what everyone's doing every week and do you have to report on your uh, neighbors and colleagues if you think there's anything that they're doing children are asked if they have any little black books um, it is a basically a surveillance culture and Christians are seen as enemies of the state because they put God before following Kim Jong Un. So there's about 400,000 Christians there, of which about 75,000 are in labor camps because they um, do. That's, that's what happens. So, one person I met, <laughs> I've never met such a dynamic person, she's about 410. <laughs> she, she was an old. Oldish lady, and in the, this prison, she'd become a Christian in China, which was when she'd come, her and her husband, who was killed in the labor camp, and uh, just kept praying to the Lord, serving people in their washing things. Because uh, you have to work all day, then you have indoctrination sessions at night, so you're barely working from something like six in the morning and indoctrination till 10 at night and you've not given enough food and so on. So many people die of starvation in the camps. Anyway, she felt God telling her that she should share the gospel. And she thought, Lord, I can't do this. <laughs> it's <insensitive. laughs> He said, don't worry, I'll lead you to who to do it. And so to one person and led them to Christ and to another and to another. So they're in the, after a while, there was four of them. And she said, we, we need to set up a church where we meet. And she suddenly thought of the toilets because the guards never went in the toilets because the toilets were long drops and they were absolutely foul and smelled like <laughs> and she said, it was great. We could go in there. <laughs> we, we could praise God because the gods never came near. And so next time, if you ever complain about your church facilities, think of the, <laughs> there's always the toilets in the back. <laughs> so uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we are keeping approximately 80,000 believers alive in North Korea with food and medicine. Now, how it gets through, I'm not allowed to know, <laughs> but it does get through. Uh, at the moment, there is a real famine in North Korea. It's not in the, uh, much in the media. So, uh, it's incredibly difficult for everyone to accept the top elite to survive and there's in china and china is getting worse and worse persecution again at the moment uh, because it's seen as a threat to the authority of the communist party but there's lots of chinese workers near the border who try and reach out to women women are trapped across the border to become basically either slaves or 
to be married off to men or to work in restaurants. They have a ministry of trying to reach out to these women and bring them to Christ. And this is what Rebecca in China says, that we have to take risks. Any of them are arrested. But even though we know it's not safe, they'll have to do it because God loves each of these women. Do we see each person around us that special? That is what is part of the challenge of the persecuted church because they see the reality of God in their life. They see the fact that God has done something amazing for them. There's another lady in North Korea who hides her Bible underneath a tree and goes out at midnight when it's dark to try and get her Bible and sort of retrieve it and read it then. And she said, this must seem like madness to you, all this suffering. But she said, for me, it's brought close to God, and I would give anything for that. So that's her testimony. Next slide, please. Is it? Yeah. Next one again. <laughs> Oh, there we go, Nigeria. And again, please. Yeah. Yeah, Nigeria is the worst place in the world for persecution uh, in terms of physical violence. Something like 85% of all Christians that are martyred every year, around 5,000 die in Nigeria. Uh, that's in northern Nigeria, and it's a very split country because you've got the Chris South and uh, you've got the Middle Belt, which is a battleground between Christians and Muslims, and they've got the north of the country, which is largely Muslim. And it's targeted at trying to get rid of Christians in the area. It's a mix of a sort of Islamic group called Boko Haram, and um, Muslim herdsmen who are Fulanis who want to get rid of Christians off the land so that they can take over the land because there is, there's a shortage of grazing land, but also they hate them because they're Christians, so they raid their village. And the tendency is for men to be killed and then the women as taken off, raped normally, and then sort of sold off uh, to fighters and others. And, and there's a lot of abductions. You may have heard of the Chibok girls a few years ago. So the, there was about 300 girls who were stolen that night from a secondary school. And still, they've only found about two thirds of them. There's still about a third of them are still missing. And that's common Nigeria. And some people's turned one cheek, we've turned the other cheek. How many cheeks have we got left to turn? So it's, but others do keep looking to Christ. So do pray for Nigeria. Next slide, please. So this is what uh, Tiram says. Uh, and this was a quote that she said when we met. Eternity is the hope. Death will come. The only difference is the time and the way that it comes. So she, she was saying, basically, if it, takes, if it comes 20, 30 years sooner, I'm going to be with Jesus. That was her view. Next one, please. Iran. Iran is sitting on a revival. Uh, basically, in 1979, when the Shah was deposed, there were around 200 Muslim background believers in Iran. Now, the estimates vary, but it's be anywhere between 
400,000 and 2 million. So that's small out of a country of about 76 million, but God is something amazing. And there's lots of believers who have fled to Turkey and to countries. But there is amazing growth in the church there. Uh, next one, please. So this is Mustaba. Uh, he was imprisoned when he was 21. He was leading a house church. And that's one thing to remember, that many leaders of the church around the world are very young because uh, the elders have been taken away or uh, deposed in some way. So, yeah, so he was put in jail for three years and he was feeling sorry for himself, as, as I think I might do if I was put in jail. And uh, God challenged him and said, I haven't finished with you yet. Don't sit here feeling sorry for yourself. From me, I'm going to do something. So he trusted in God. And even though he was beaten, he believed that God was going to do something. And uh, funnily, and, and I don't know how this works, but he was friendly with an imam who used to the prison. And the imam asked him, is there anything I could do? And he said, bring me Bibles. <laughs> and he said, couldn't you ask me for drugs? That's much easier. <laughs> so somehow they managed to get a Bible into the prison and they split it up into five bits and uh, copied it out. And by the time that he left prison, he had about 20, 25 uh, in his sort of mini church inside the prison. So God is doing amazing things. There is a spirit of hunger in that country. Next one, please. So I hope that has given you a bit of a picture of what God is doing around uh, the world. Uh, I've got a little stand there. Come and see me afterwards. Uh, the, uh, there's various materials. Uh, what can you do? There's three things you can do, really. Uh, first of all, find out more. What is God doing? There are difficult things happening around the world, but there's also exciting and challenging things that God is doing. Be informed. You, you can be an influence. Uh, we get over 100 MPs come every year to the launch of the World Watch List. And when they're asked why, they say, our constituents ask us to. So that you can make a difference in that and raise awareness. Prayer is always the key thing. There was a man in Gulag in Russia. This was years ago. And he was put in a cell at midnight. And it was freezing cold. It was the middle of the winter. There was a broken window. It was about minus 30, putting it in there to kill him. And they said, we'll come and we will uh, we'll certify you dead in the morning. So he said, Lord, this, I just feel s I've served you. Now I'm in this position. Please, can you do something? Anyway, there was... Quite separately, there was a, a prayer group in South Korea, and this woman had read about this man, and she just felt this sudden urge, really strong urge, to get her group together and pray for him. And so they got together and prayed for him. Meanwhile, in that gulag, he said, after that prayer, I suddenly felt like there was a warm blanket being put around me and that God was developing me with warmth and love and so they they walked down the corridor the next morning with the doctor to certify him dead and there he was sitting on his bench and they went oh! <laughs> and uh, the doctor tested him and said he's warmer than we 
there's a ceiling to this church. There is not a ceiling to what God can do, to what your prayers can do. Prayer is key to open doors. It's key to any ministry. And finally, I've put on, uh, there's a, a code there, and I've also put things on your seats. If you want to give, if you want to find out more, either scan the code or fill in the forms there and come and see me afterwards. I've got World Watch lists. I've got things for the kids, uh, all types of stuff. So thank you for your time. <laughs> that could take a while. <laughs> That year was the end of a seven-year prayer campaign. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yes, uh, you can say it's coincidence or you can say it's God incidence. But, yeah, yeah it yeah. was. That would have been I mean, that's an amazing hour of prayer to yeah. bring down that yeah. kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah absolutely. Do you, do you have books you could recommend besides uh, Brother Andrews? Uh, we do a sort of, like, bi-monthly uh, thing. Uh, and information thing. I would also recommend, oh, I've forgotten his name, Richard Birnbrands. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He I've read his wife's book, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pastor's the, wife, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that book is really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, th there aren't really that many books, but there's plenty of resources. Yeah. 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 So you've asked us to pray for you and pray yeah. for Open Doors, which is great. I appreciate that. If people wanted to take it, if there's a slight stir in people's hearts, they want yeah. to listen more about that. Yeah. How would they go about maybe getting a little bit more involved? Then maybe they know people that yeah. they work with who are from some of these countries. Yeah. Uh, as I say, if you scan the code or you sort of fill in the information, we can send you information about what yeah. is happening, what yeah. God is doing around. Or go and have a look on the Open Doors website. There's lots of information on the website about different trees, different places, yeah, yeah. Uh, and current news from around the world. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah. And how did you get into this? What's your <laughs> backstory? <laughs> how did I? You're, you're, you say you've met some of these people. Is that in the I UK have. or is that in their, in their natural Both. Country? Both, okay. Both, yeah. Uh, I have uh, basically, yeah, I, I read that God smuggler, Brother Andrew, back in the 80s when I was a a young Christian, one of those seminal books. Everyone's reading it, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that made a real difference in my Christian life. So I s supported them alongside various other ministries. And yeah, then the first years of this century were a difficult time for me, but then, and I was out in mi ministry for a while. And then I went to an Open Doors conference back in 2011 and I just felt a calling to do something about it and uh, that's when I became a speaker and then I've done a number of trips with Open Doors and sort of done fundraising activities and that type of thing. Can I just ask what's the most difficult dangerous situation you've been in? Where has been the, the place you thought 
I might not get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that in Peru a couple of times. <laughs> I probably in Iraq uh, when it was about a year after ISIS yeah. uh, had attacked. And uh, so we were in the various camps. And then we went up country yeah. uh, to Nether and they said, uh, the uh, yes mines are about six miles over there. And so we were very aware of that. Mm. And, and you have to travel on this road. You know, we couldn't go to night and things. Mm. Mm. So uh, it was never dangerous because they wouldn't risk sending us if it was mm. too dangerous. But you were very aware of. That's very close, isn't it? For me, yeah. that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, so I've never been in person yeah. danger, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I've. The field work and us yeah. uh, of the ministries we work with do a lot more just things than yeah. they allow speakers on their yeah. trips to yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Ruth and Mendes, who is supporting Mozambique. You may be aware that ISIS, who are, are fighting in Iraq and Syria, are also the people in Mozambique who are pushing down and are that not that far away from Pemba, wherever Ruth and uh, Mendez and the boys are situated. So, yeah. uh, any, any more questions? Any questions you got? Colin. We get involved in getting literature in, very definitely. Uh, we don't do much with radio. Uh, something like Sat7 is really good for radio. I mean, there's, there's three key things that seem to be bringing people to Christ across the Middle East and so on, as you say. Radio and TV and things like that. And I, I could tell you a story afterwards, but I won't uh, now. Uh, Christian literature. So you've got things like the uh, uh, OM ship, you know, the, uh, the Logos hope is out there now. And then the other thing is dreams and visions. There are so really? many wow. uh, Muslims receiving dreams and visions from the Lord. So those three things together are what is, is working to bring people to Christ. So the guy in town who runs the Methodist Church, yeah. Calvin, one of our friends, um, yeah. he's got friends in Malaysia yeah. who he goes to the marketplace because there's Muslims getting dreams and visions of Jesus, yeah. and he's their pastor in the marketplace. That's the only place they can contact them because it's too dangerous. Yeah, yeah, that's otherwise. That's what we before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. I just need to point out Raquel as well, who's been a missionary in China. Oh, uh, hello. Get you guys join you guys up afterwards. So. Yeah. And probably in very dangerous situations as well, I think. It's much <laughs> worse in China. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're just about to finish now. Cause, uh, can someone let the kids come out? Let the, let the kids know we're finished. Why don't you stand up and we're going to pray for Adrian. Thanks, Dave. So I just want you to extend your arms or your thought prayers. Just as we pray for Adrian and everything that Open Doors do, we're just going to bring our uh, prayers into the, uh, the melting pot. Holy Spirit, we ask that you continue to move our hearts for people who are just struggling, Lord, just struggling to do the things that we take for granted. Jesus, and I thank you for this message this morning. I thank you for what Adrian's done the past 12 years, Lord, to bring this message to us. And how important it is to hear that, Lord, and that 1 Corinthians 12, that we are a body of many parts. Those that are struggling are supported by those that are doing Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we bless those people mentioned on the, on the uh, uh, projector today, Lord, in Nigeria and Iran and North Korea, Lord. Just the hot spots in the world, Jesus. That you will send your protection and your love and your warm blankets to them, Lord. Surround them, Lord.
some of you might know people you've worked with in this country, God is just bringing into your mind. Some of you may be stirred to get involved with Open Doors or stirred to speak to Avian. There are, you know, lots of different levels to get involved in. Just as God does that, just going to pray that just brings that to our spiritual attention. Lord, just stir up our hearts to help these people. Jesus, just where we are today, Lord. We can do that from where we are, Lord, and we can always get also go out to meet them if we need to, if you're asking us to do that. But I pray for vision, Lord. Pray for compassion. Lord, I pray for gratitude and thankfulness, Lord, that we don't have that in this country, that you allow us to worship freely. If you came today looking for prayer for yourself, uh, we're not going anywhere for a little while. Do come and grab us and we'll get someone to pray for you. That's no problem at all. If you wanted to chat to us, they're welcome to. Uh, baptisms, if you want to get baptised next week, do have a chat with us this morning because we need to organise that uh, from tomorrow, from today onwards, coming up to next week. So we'll give you the details online. It will be on the uh, Facebook page, uh, website, uh, and we'll also send it by email um, the details for where we're going to meet next week. Uh, in South End for the baptisms. Uh, grab yourself a coffee. Uh, if you're new, come and introduce yourself to us. We'd love to have a chat with you. Come have a chat with Adrian. Take the literature. There's loads of literature around. Please do take it and just uh, pray over it. Uh, get on the website uh, and just uh, connect if you want to with everything that he said this morning. Thank you.